Welcome everyone! As I promised last time, today I'm taking you on a journey. But before we will depart, I need to address some technical matters. I've been asked about techniques and tools I use to paint my miniatures, and here is my answer to them. As I mentioned in previous entry, this series is about lore. But I also mentioned that I have plans for expanding this channel. And that means that soon, next series will appear. This next series will focus exclusively on techniques, tools and paints I am using to paint my miniatures. However, that's not all, as I will be trying to learn techniques and I'll be using tools I've never used before. All of this will be immortalized for you to see on this channel. So stay tuned! Now, back to our little trip. Let me take you on a journey through time and space. Right now, we are racing towards far reaches of our galaxy, but in grim future of 31st millennium. So strap on. Thirty-first millennium is a rough one. Empire of Mankind is struggling. Orcs, Drukhari, Tyranids and other Xenos races are sitting tight for perfect time to strike. Forces of Chaos are launching full-scale planetary crusades once in a while. But they pose greater threat lurking in the shadows of Empire, as smaller or bigger cults trigger occasional conflicts among inner factions. Those are truly grim times, but fear not. Mankind has its defenders, and finest of them all are Adeptus Astartes, the Space Marines. Those superhuman unyielding warriors were created and designed by the Emperor himself. Those warriors are equipped with finest weapons, technology and of course legendary power armor. And they know no fear. However, even those angels of death are mortal and can fall in battle or be crippled. When the latter happens, body of such battle brother is being repaired and placed inside a sarcophagus with life support systems. Next, such sarcophagus is placed inside the armored walking wall machine. Battle brother is connected with neural links to walker's cybernetic systems and as a result, machine's body becomes its own. Pilot is interacting with the outside world through sensors installed inside the life support systems. Battle brothers that undergo such procedure are entombed in such machine permanently, but it is considered great honor within Adeptus Astartes ranks. That is how the Dreadnoughts, main theme of this journey, are being created. Dreadnoughts are highly respected within their chapter ranks and have their resting place called Sepulchre. 
which is considered a shrine by the rest of the Battle Brothers. They are tended there by tech marines chanting litanies of preservation. In those sacred halls, those holy war machines can sleep for centuries, undisturbed until their assistance is needed once more. While essentially being a tombs for its pilots, thanks to life-supporting systems, dreadnoughts also provide them with extremely prolonged lifespans, making them often thousands of years old. Oldest of them are called venerable dreadnoughts, and due to their ancient knowledge and experience, they are approached by their battle brothers not only in need of aid in combat, but also in need of counsel in various matters concerning their chapters. There are few patterns of dreadnoughts, and while all of them are extremely rare in 31st millennium, most common of them all are Castroferum pattern dreadnoughts, which can be equipped with wide variety of loadouts, each designed for a certain purpose on a battlefield. Due to that, there are dreadnoughts that are designed for close combat, as well as those that excel at long-range combat or destroying vehicles. Then, there are Contemptor Butter Dreadnoughts, ancient war machines used by the Adeptus Astartes in times of the Great Crusade. This pattern is more advanced than Castroferum pattern, which makes it more powerful, larger, but so rare that they are considered relics. In days of the Great Crusade, the Contemptors served as spearhead unit alongside Castroferum pattern. However, after the events of Horus Heresy and the Great Scarring, their numbers depleted heavily, which made them rare but still formidable sight. Of course, as well as its smaller cousin, Contemptors were also provided in few variants to meet specific needs of a battlefield. Even more rare than before mentioned patterns are the Radio Pattern Dreadnought, those served as dedicated heavy support. This pattern shares many technical similarities with Contemptor Dreadnought, however its manufacturing has been very difficult, hence just limited number were given to each of Space Marine's legions. This pattern is known for great durability and firepower. Despite its difficult manufacturing process, its numbers increased during the Horus Heresy events. Unlike Contemptor or Castroferum patterns, the Radio pattern was not equipped with close combat weapons aside from heavy flamers. Rest of its loadout was designed for long range and armored targets combat.
Now for the most exceptional dreadnought pattern in 41st millennium. Legendary Leviathan Pattern Siege Dreadnought. Manufacturing of this pattern started when the Great Crusade was at its end in limited numbers. It was designed in secret on Terra, unlike other patterns that were created on Mars under the watchful eye of Adeptus Mechanicus. This design absolutely towers over before mentioned patterns. Its bulking frame contains technologies from ancient past, which is impossible to recreate in 41st millennium. Those Leviathan pattern dreadnoughts were designed for siege warfare, armed with powerful close combat loadout, with supporting weaponry. No matter what was the target, this pattern just shredded to pieces. Thanks to its unique technology and power source, this pattern was provided with weapons and defense systems created exclusively for it, making it the most powerful dreadnought pattern. However, unlike before mentioned patterns, piloting this one took a heavy toll on a battle brother entombed in it, as a level of strain placed on him could cost him his life or sanity. For that reason, in 41st millennium, Space Marines chapters awakened those dreadnoughts only in truly dire times. As mentioned before, those walking armored tombs are often considered a living embodiment of the machine god in Adeptus Mechanicus' eyes, as they consider it to be a perfect fusion between mechanical and living body. All of them are also considered as a holy relics of the pinnacle of the empire of mankind, as remaining few are often so old that they are a link between current times and the very beginnings of the empire. Another reason they are treated with such high esteem is that, throughout the millennia, knowledge on their manufacturing process has been lost to humanity. Each dreadnought that falls in battle is not only a loss of war machine and its pilot, but also a loss of a part of mankind history, culture and heritage.
Finally, the pattern you see being painted right now. This one is newest designed, called Redemptor Dreadnought, and it varies heavily from the rest of Dreadnoughts. It is manufactured in 31st millennium, hence I brought it as last one. This pattern has been created alongside improved Space Marines called Primaris Space Marines, and only they can pilot those war machines. Redemptor pattern is bigger and bulkier than standard pattern dreadnoughts. Its size is comparable to that of Leviathan pattern. As for its loadout, it is not as much various as in other patterns. Redemptor Dreadnoughts are always armed with Dreadnought Power Fist for close quarter combat, and as for long range, they are armed with Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon, which simply erases enemy infantry or Macroplasma Incinerator for dealing with armored vehicles. Again, similarly to Leviathan pattern, the larger hull provides with more space for more advanced power source and life supporting systems, as well as neural links of pilot sarcophagus. That being said, more advanced technology provides ability to control this mechanical body with exceptional speed and dexterity. However, there are rumors about huge flaw of this pattern. Redemptor dreadnoughts that have been in battle for prolonged periods of time have had their sarcophagi replaced a few times already due to the fact that all of these advanced systems are working so intensively that pilot inside is simply being burned out by them till his death. Well, that would be all for a brief summary of the lore and history regarding Dreadnoughts. I hope you enjoyed this journey to the grim darkness of far future, where is only war. But let's not get depressed. Next time I'm going to cheer you up in upcoming episode with a little bit of green. Bigger and smaller, but always fun. Thank you for watching and please leave a comment, like and subscribe if you had fun. And for now, I bid you very fond goodbye.